So the other day I was online and I came across a very cool example of data viz that I want to share with you guys. I found it on the Pew Research Center site, which is an organization that captures a lot of US politics and policy related data. And basically they had this really cool piece about political polarization and they built out this animated visual that I thought was just the coolest thing ever. It's a really great example of using overlapping area charts and animating them over time to tell a really clear story. And what we're looking at here is basically Democrat and Republican viewpoints in terms of being consistently liberal versus consistently conservative. And essentially what this area chart is doing is it's almost acting like a dual histogram where you're seeing the distribution of two different data sets changing over time as well as the overlap between them. And so they've got five different years in the sample and as you page through you can see how over time these viewpoints have shifted and eventually as you get to 2014 you can see this very clear division or polarization taking place. So naturally I saw this and said I just have to replicate this thing in Excel because it's it's so clean, it's so cool, it tells such a powerful story. So thought this would be a great example to use as a demo to walk you guys through from start to finish. So let's head into Excel and uh, we're going to be on the animating changes over time tab. Basically what I did was recreate uh, a new raw data set and we've got the same five years, 94 through 2014. And for each year we've got 21 different data points or rows which shows the score from liberal all the way down to conservative where the middle represents mixed viewpoints. And then we have the number of Democrats and the number of Republicans who align with each of those scores in each of these years. So what we'll do is start by just creating an area chart for one given year, just so that we can get the formatting right and start to get our bearings. So I'm going to select B1 through D22. I don't need the actual year data point in here. So I'm going to insert within the line options a 2D area and do a little bit of formatting here so let's make it big because it's really cool let's get rid of the chart title here and I'm gonna format the chart area I just don't really want a border around it and then for Democrats and Republicans in the legend I want to make that a lot bigger and bold and just spread it out a little bit so next I want to change the actual colors and transparency of the two data series within here and I'd like to align them with the appropriate colors so for my Democrat series I'm gonna give it a dark blue solid fill and let's call it let's call it 30 percent transparency and for my Republican series I'm gonna give it a dark red fill with that same 30% transparency. There we go. Now we've got our blue Democrat series, our red Republican series. It's very clear where the overlap lies. And that's a really nice example of a data viz if you were looking at a snapshot in time from 1994. So already we've done a pretty good job visualizing uh, this data set at hand. And in this case, I actually don't really need the y axis labels because it doesn't really add much to see the counts. We're really just interested in the relative differences between the two data sets. So that's step one, building one example. Now the key is to actually animate this thing over time. We've got five years in the data set. I want to see how things have changed over the course of that time span. So what I'm going to do is just type select year in cell F5, make it bold and italic, give it a right align. And then here in cell G5, I'm going to use a little bit of data validation and what I want to do is create a cell where users can drop down and select any of those five years in the sample just like we saw on the site. So to do that I need a source list for this drop down in cell S1 I'm just going to enter the years it's 94, 99, you know I guess I'll do it the legitimate way I could select all of my years here even with duplicates I could paste them here and then in data just hit the remove duplicates button 
and there you go. So that, that leaves me with my five unique years in the data set. And now back to G5, I'm going to use a data validation option, which is in my data tab. Data validation. And what I want to allow in this cell is a list of values. And the source list of those values lives right here from S1 through S5. And I press OK. There you go. Got my list. Let's make it bold and centered and give it a little bit of fill just so that users know, OK, this is something that I can select. So now we've got our drop down, but it's not linked to anything. All you're doing is just changing the value in G5 itself. So what we need to do is create a second data set, which is going to be the new source data for this chart, and have that data set be dynamic based on the year that a user has selected. So I'm going to start by grabbing the headers and pasting them down here below the chart. This will be my new dynamic source data set. And I can grab all of the scores, since those will be the same, and paste them right here. And now the year is going to equal whatever the user has entered in G5. I'm going to press F4 to fix that reference. If you want to learn more about reference types, I would definitely recommend checking out my Excel Analytics Advanced Formulas and Functions course. There's a whole section on, on reference types. But so basically, that allows me to drag this down and have the reference remain fixed at G5 in every row. So now, if I change the 94 to a 99, my 94 changes to a 99 here as well in my source data. Now the key is to actually populate the values for Democrats and Republicans, because that's what's really going to drive the area chart above. So there are a few ways to do that, a few different functions that you can use. You could use index match. Uh, in this case, I'm going to use a sum ifs function. So basically what sum ifs does is it sums the values in a particular column given certain criteria. So in this case, I want to sum the values in the Democrats column in column C. I'm going to fix that where the criteria range, column A, is equal to the year in cell G33. And I can fix just the G piece of that. And the second criteria is where the score in column B is equal to the score. I just arrowed over because it's tough to see. The score in H33. And I'll fix the H there and let 33 shift to 34, 35, 36 as I apply this formula down. So I know that was a very quick <laughs> run through of the sum ifs function. Uh, again, I don't want to take too much time digging into formulas in this course, but there's a whole section on statistical functions in my uh, advanced formulas and functions course. So definitely check that out. Try to replicate exactly what I've written here. And when I press OK and drag that down, it populates all my Democrat values. And we can do a quick QA. This is 1999 data, which has 9, 20, 23, 38. 9, 20, 23, 38. Looks good. And now I can copy and paste that formula in the Republicans column. And the only thing I need to change is the column that we're summing values from. So it's no longer column C. It's now column D, which is where my Republican data lives. And same case, I can just drag that down and do a quick QA, so 2, 3, 4, 16, 19, 2, 3, 4, 16, 19. Looks good. And now again, I'll change this to 2004. The year changes, and because these are now coded in as sum ifs functions, the values for Democrats and Republicans change as well. So we're almost there. All we need to do is now tie the source data, which we had originally set just for 1994 down to this dynamic array that we've created. And here's a really, really great tip that I actually didn't learn until just recently, and it's been such a lifesaver, which is that I think starting in Excel 2013 or maybe 2010, uh, they changed things so that if you drag the source data and just try to move it for a given chart, see how it reformatted things? And I'll do the same thing with. Republican data set here. Let's drag it down. See how it, it just defaulted back to the blue and orange, in which case I'd have to go through and say, all right, I want to fill it with red again and give it that 30% transparency. 
there's actually a workaround to prevent this from happening. And so I'm going to undo both of those steps I just took, and head to the file option, go into options down here. And if you go into advanced and scroll all the way down to chart, this last checkbox that says properties follow chart data point for current workbook, just uncheck that and press OK. I have no idea why the default is to totally strip your formatting when you move a source data array. That doesn't make much sense to me, but it is what it is. And luckily, once you know that little trick, it's an easy fix. So now instead of doing reformatting, I can just grab my source array and shift it into place for both my series. So there's Democrats. And see how it stays that blue? And now here's my red Republican series. So I can drag it right there. I can also change the headers, but realistically, it's the same header uh, in each case. So it doesn't really matter. But let's go ahead and do that. So now our source is linked to our dynamic array. And what that means is that, boom, you can change the drop down, select a new year. And because our source data is changing, the graph itself is changing as well. So you can see that really cool distribution happening now. So if you want to stop there, that's totally fine. I think that's awesome. I'm going to show you one other kind of bonus step just to make it a little bit easier to page through the animations instead of having to click and select from a list each time. And to do that, we're going to use a different kind of form control from our developer tab. And I'm going to insert what's called a uh, spin button. And basically, that's just an up or down button that changes the value in a given cell. So follow along here. I'm going to do this quickly. I'm going to format the control. And I'm going to give it a minimum value of 1, maximum value of 5. And I'm going to link it to cell R1. And press OK. And what I can do here is go back into my data tab with G5 selected. And I actually want to remove the data validation list settings that I had originally done. So I'm going to change this to any value, and that basically resets this cell. So now, as you can see, this spin button changes the value in R1 from 1 to 5. And actually, what I'll do is I want to cut that and paste it in Q instead of R. And I'll show you why in just a second. It's still linked to the spinner. And now in column R, I'm going to just type 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And essentially, that's assigning an index number to each of the years that I have available. So an index of 1 corresponds with 94, 2 corresponds with 99, and so on and so forth. So what that allows me to do in cell G5 is to replace this year value with a VLOOKUP function. And I'm going to say look up the value that my spinner is currently producing within this little array from R1 through S5. And I'll fix that entire array. And then the column index is 2, because I want to pull the value to the second column over from my index. And my range lookup is 0, because I want to find the exact value. And press Enter. So again, kind of like the sum ifs, that was a very quick crash course in VLOOKUPs. But essentially, the lookup function allows you to search for a particular value. In this case, we're searching for an index number from 1 to 5, and return the data from a corresponding column. So we found the index number. We returned the year value from the next column over. That's what that column index of 2 means. So what that allows me to do is tie the year value to my little spinner here and make it just a little bit more user friendly to page through uh, the five years in my sample. So there you have it. This is an excellent way to visualize trends over time using animated overlapping area charts.